Okay, today is the 15th of December 2009. We are at the Isaac C. Griswold Public Library in Whitehall, New York. My name is Wayne Clark. I'm with the New York State Military Museum and Veterans Research Center in Saratoga Springs, New York. Sir, for the record, would you please state your full name and your date and place of birth, please? Paul Norman Gordon, 61226, Whitehall, New York. Did you attend school in Whitehall? Yes. And uh, did you graduate? Uh, no, I didn't graduate. Till they gave us the diplomas up to uh, the school two years back. Okay. Do you remember where you were when uh, you heard about the attack on yes. Pearl Harbor? Yes. I was just going into a store. I didn't think much of it then until I got down to my Max Gordon. He had a he owned a bar over there. And he was my uncle, and we were all down there, and we were talking about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't think anything too much of it, you know, because <clears throat> Japan wasn't too big of a country. Yeah. But they had a lot of men, I guess. Mm -hmm. And that's why I first heard of it. Now, uh, when did you go into the service? Uh, well, I was going to go in when I was 17. Mm -hmm. I asked my father to sign the papers. He says, no. He says, we got enough boys in there now. My brothers. Uh -huh. okay? And what, so, what are your brothers' names? Well, Max Gordon, mm -hmm. Robert Gordon, Clifford Gordon, Willard Gordon, uh, Russell Gordon. That's the ones who were in during the war. They were all in the service during yes. the war. Uh, the one brother, Clifford, he had, he was on two invasions. And he says, Paul, you'll never forget going into Africa. The Frenchmen were shooting at us, uh, if you ever read the story. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, we couldn't figure it out. They're, they're supposed to be our friends, and they're out there shooting. But there was some, some mix up there or something. I got the book home on it, and uh, then he, in um, uh, D-Day, he was in the second wave to go into Normandy. Uh, since then, he retired in Colorado, and he died uh, a few years ago. Okay. And uh, so you went into the Navy. Where, did you enlist, or were you drafted? No, I was drafted. I was coming down the canal. Lock 18, I think, a, a little place up there they call Newark, New York, mm -hmm. and my my birthday. Well, I said, I'm going to go over and sign up. Okay? And uh, all the guys on the boat said, no, Paul, we can get you, keep, keep you out of it. I said, I don't want to be out of it. I want to go in. So I did, and two months later, ta -da, ta -da, I was in. Mm -hmm. And where did they send you for your basic training? Uh, Samson. At ten weeks up there, mm -hmm. and what was Samson like? Oh, I loved it. You know, our commander said then that you guys are a little downhearted here, but I didn't care because uh, really I didn't have no home anyway to begin with. So, what the hell? I had a good spot there, mm -hmm. good bunk, meals, and um, it was good. And I went into. Uh, no, he called me in the office one time. He says, what's the matter out there, Gordon? Well, it seemed to me, sir, that the same guys are doing the same work every night. I was kayaking the floors and all that and mm -hmm. making shine. And uh, he said to me, Paul, in your life, you do what you have to do and do the other guys too. And I promise you, you'll never be out of a job. Well, I went by that. I would, so uh, that was the end of that. Mm -hmm. Now, after Samson, where did you go? Uh, Pensacola, Florida. Okay. Uh, Florida, yeah. And uh, tell us about your experiences in Pensacola. Well, uh, I really, well, the, in the draft part of it, the guy was good enough. He says, I, I see uh, you're a seaman, huh? I said, yes, sir. He said, how do you like to go in the Navy? I said, fine. 
So that's how I got in the Navy. Mm -hmm. But I never figured I'd get into the the Air, Air Corps part of it, mm -hmm. which I liked after. How did that come about? Well, uh, they just call your names and a whole bunch of uh, You get in the troop train and uh, about four bunks up, that's where I was. Now I got to go to the bathroom, four bunks down, four bunks. <laughs> it was a nuisance, but it was good. So you went down to Pensacola. Uh, Pensacola. Did, did they put you through some kind of training program? Uh, not then. Uh, we um, we got off the train and uh, they called our names off, got in the buses, because see there was seven bases down there in Pensacola. Mm -hmm. One bus go here, one to the, I happened to ended up in what they call Softly Field, which was a beautiful field. A brick building, marble floors, you know, or granite, mm -hmm. and they were good. It was good barracks. And I stayed there uh, 26 months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And <clears throat> the first rate come out, I took the exam and I made it. Mm -hmm. The second time it come out, I made it. And then but I do, you don't get the rate right away. Eh? So they called in for some semen. I said, Jesus, I'll, I'll go. So uh, he said, well, you got to go see the commander. So I went over and I went to sign up with these guys going out of here. Uh, he said, Paul, you just made a rate. I said, yes, can I leave it here? He said, yes, sir. So I did. And, See, now you got to, what you got to do is go down to the dentist. And the dentist, the first thing you know, went in the yard. The, uh, we had an old Dr. Dentist here, carpenter. I had a bad tooth. He filled it from the bottom up. And this dentist down there, I thought it was amazing. Well, he says, Paul, I tell you, you, you got a little work here, so you're not going out with this bunch. So I, I went back to my job, just as happy as could be. I just wanted to get a little action, you know, because mm -hmm. I had a brother out in the Navy, out in the South Pacific, and uh, oh, oh, they were scattered all. And my brother in the Marines, he was on Guam, Okinawa, and then after that he went into the Korean War for a while. And then when I come to get discharged, uh, the chief, the old chief, called me in. He said, hey, Gordon, how about you signing over? Because they knew a good guy when they saw one, you know. And I'm lying. Well, anyway, I said, no, sir. I said, I got a job when I get out because I was on this tug. And they promised me my job back when I got back, but it didn't materialize. Hmm. It's just as well because I ended up through the ranks, we'll call them, as a chief engineer. Uh, actually, partner a superintendent of my company, Keyhole Brothers. He had nine tugs and three barges, mm -hmm. and I used to take care of them all. Any problems, I'd go. I'd get off that tug and go to that one, and stuff like that. Next question. Okay, so the 26 months you were down in Pensacola, what exactly were you doing down there? I was, well, I was aviation machinist mate. Mm -hmm. Actually, my job was to be around the planes, uh, not overhauling them, because I didn't have enough experience at the time. There were radio engines, radio, I uh, forget the horsepower. Were they trainers or were they? Oh, uh, no, the trainers are light. Mm -hmm. This is when you come over the softly field, the plane is heavier. Okay. Now you're in the flying. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a different thing altogether. And I flew, well, let's say about 15 different aircraft while I was in the Navy, including the PBYs and mm -hmm. the, the plan, plan. Now, now, were you a crew member on the ship? I, I mean, you weren't a pilot, were you? No, 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 no. Um, you know, there was a couple of marine lieutenants and captains 
Uh, I used to get along with these guys. I used to work on their engines at night on the, their cars. Mm -hmm. And when I wanted a car, I asked them for it. Yeah. If I need a little hooch, uh, they take me down to BOQ there. I think that's how you pronounce it. And uh, they get it for two dollars and a half a bottle. Mm -hmm. Champagne. So why drink Coke when he? <laughs> so I like it. And the guys, we all got along good. Uh -huh. And we take off on the weekends. Uh, uh, about four of us, about three officers. Uh, then we didn't. We still call one another sir and mister. You know, I didn't. I never let it get by me. Mm -hmm. And now the cadets. They had a different barracks. It wasn't far from uh, maybe, oh, probably from here to the Elks. And when their schedule would be on the board, I knew most of them. Okay? And I said, Jesus, they ain't here. If they get, if they don't show up on time to take their flight, they get the merits. You get too many of them, you're out. So I would go down to the barracks, holler for Jesse James or whatever their name was, and tell them that you're too up, you know. And uh, now, about a year after that, I'm walking to uh, the ship service, they call it. And it was about a bunch of them there, about 20. They just got their bars, Henson bars. Mm -hmm. So I walk down, I, I throw them a big salute. Uh, hey, Gordon, you don't have to do that. I do have to do that. I said, you're an officer now. The only th flavor I want to ask you guys is treat the service, the enlisted men, with a little respect also, you know. And I think they did. But they are all likable guys. Mm -hmm. So you got along well with them? All very well, very well. Okay. Yeah. All right, what did you do uh, after you left Pensacola? You mean when I got discharged? Oh, you were you were in Pensacola for the entire Yeah, 26, time? 26 months. Okay. 27, so, something like that. So you didn't you didn't go overseas then? No, they they no, the, the dentist turned me down. Uh oh, okay. You got to have work, Gordon. So okay. that left me out right there. All right. And uh, <clears throat> so you you work your way up to what rank? Were well, you? actually, it don't show on my discharge, but I went up to uh, the second class petty officer. Mm -hmm. But it don't show because I got out before they posted it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I still ended up third class aviation machinist. Okay. Me. Now, what was uh, life like uh, down in Pensacola, off off base? Well, I liked it, except for uh, the Japanese when they surrendered. Well, we went a hooping around the base. Mm -hmm. The Japs had surrendered. And we got word that we were confined to the base. Imagine that. So uh, that's the only day I, I felt bad. Cause I really wanted to go in town and celebrate. Uh -huh. you know? Do you remember uh, the death of President Roosevelt? Yes. Uh, what, what was that like? April, well, there was a lot of conversation between the, the officers and the enlisted men uh, saying uh, when Truman's name was mentioned, oh, Jesus. I think it was April 12, 44, wasn't it? 45. 45. And um, they all kept saying, oh, Jesus, now we're in trouble, that Truman, that Truman. As far as I'm concerned, he, he done a hell of a job. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I still say, like uh, a lot of them today, he saved our life with them two A-bombs. Mm -hmm. you see, the Japanese, they were being invaded one time by the somebody off China, I forget the name of them. They had sailing boats and everything coming out, and they were going to get, you know, clobbered. Meanwhile, up comes this storm. In about three hours, there wasn't a boat in sight. That's what they figured us when we were going to invade. Uh, what the hell, like the book, uh, I can't think of it now. I will during the conversation. Mm -hmm. I bored the book too. 
Kamikaze? Hmm? Kamikaze? No. <clears throat> no. There was a... Uh, I borrowed a book from uh, the uh, Border Patrol guy was here. I think you guys know him. Most of them. Bob Purdy. Pardon? Border Patrol. Oh, Border Patrol. Mm -hmm. Cataract. Okay. Cataract. Cataract. Well, Cataract? Cataract. Right. He let me take the divine. Divine wind? You divine winds. Okay. That's yep. it. And that, that's what they expected. Then. They thought they were going to have a, another divine wind, but mm -hmm. they didn't. Now, once the war ended, uh, how much longer did you stay in the service? I <laughs> see the war ended in August. I stayed into July. Oh, okay. Yeah. What, what, did, what did they have you doing once the war ended? Well, we, we never slacked. We just kept right on training and doing what we were doing. So the, the cadets were still flying the aircraft? Yeah, mm -hmm. every morning. We are putting in 12 hours a day, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes they let us off for the weekends. Were there any shortages that you were experiencing at the end of the war? Sure or was it still plenty of equipment, plenty of gasoline? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was fine. It's just like nothing happened, mm -hmm. you know? And then the, the yeoman come down and he says, Hey, Gordon, you're up for a leave. I don't want no leave. I'm going home. But I never figured I had to stay there from August to July, mm -hmm. you know. But I did. What the hell? Now, once the war had ended, uh, so many guys were getting out of the service. Did they try to get you to stay in? Yes. Yeah. I, I, just, I just didn't want to. But uh, now I wish I had them, mm -hmm. you know. Because I talked with some guys there that went in during the Korean War. He says, Paul, what we did was nothing like we did when the war was on. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. How, how was, uh, how was your, your living uh, quarters like on base? I, did you have plenty of food? And oh, dear. You, you wouldn't believe it. Like I said, uh, it was two bunks high. At granite floors, mm -hmm. and they polish them printer every day. Uh, it was a beautiful building, two stories, mm -hmm. uh, all brick. No, you, you couldn't beat it. And the food was good. Pardon? Food was good. Oh yeah, so I still got my uh, mess hall pass because uh -huh. a lot of times uh, I would have to go out to different fields. Uh, yeah, what do what we quit your sneezing. Yes, sir. A different field for our aircraft. They said uh, they got three cows on the runway. They either would just nobody taking care of the fields, but it was for us to make uh, what do they call it? A low, a low pass. Yeah, no, you go on. Um, Touch and go. Touch and go. Okay. Who said that? <coughs> you did. Yeah. Stop it. And uh, what about uh, what about leave time? I come home one time in okay. twenty six months. Okay. I got home and what the hell? Is, so what the hell I come home for? There's nobody home. Mm -hmm. We were all gone, you know. Even Walter Winchell mentioned it during the war that White Hall was the hardest hit little town in the country. Mm -hmm. So. Did you have a lot of friends here that uh, didn't come back, were no, lost yes, in the war? Yes, I, I think a lot of them, mm -hmm. about it, you know. You got Donald Gandro and Gerald Gordon, a few guys like that all around my age. Mm -hmm. hey. Gerald was a husky kid. We got along good though, yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> once you got out of the Navy, uh, where, whereabouts were you discharged from? Pensacola? No, Alito Beach, Long Island. Okay. Hey. And then you came back to Whitehall? Yeah, uh, eventually. I stopped in Mechanicsville because that's where my father was 
and I had a brother living there. Mm -hmm. Did Did you make use of the GI Bill at all? Uh, I was going to. I was really going to. Then um, I was going to take out diesel, you know, because I I was in the engine room before I went in the Navy. Mm -hmm. So I said, shit, I'll take up diesel when I get out. But Ray Greenwood, he said to me one, one day, Paul, he said, I got some books on diesel I got from the GI, or what you just mentioned. You want it? I said, yeah, what's been that money? Mm -hmm. Not thick, but, you know. So I took them, and I used them. And, um, and then uh, when I did get a job back on a boat, Oh, I, I'll say I oiled for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. That means washing paint and shining brass and all that for 15 years. I had one engineer say, Paul, you don't know what this looks like until you come back from leave yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, so after that, I started... Uh, I got an engineer job, finally. And then that fall, Kehoe bought two tugs. One of the tugs I had an engineer job on. So I went and I saw his brother. And I says, uh, I told him I, I was on that boat last year as chief. He said, okay, he said, I'll tell my brother. So the next next day they're both in the yard, the two brothers, Clayton and Martin. And Martin says to me, Gordon, uh, can I depend on you? I says, I'll tell you right now, I got to quit a job to take your job. Can I depend on you? <laughs> yes, he says. So all right, I stayed with him for 30 years. Uh-huh. Yeah. And all these tugs that I worked on, uh, I ended up overhauling them, pulling pistons, heads, and anything you want to mention, put hydraulic houses on. I'd done that in the winter when our work was slow. Mm -hmm. I, I had three or four guys from Whitehall helping me. So I did about six or seven hydraulic houses. Well, I don't know if you remember, across the creek here, right behind the museum, I'd done two repeats that they had bridges with, okay? So uh, it gave me about two months' work here. It took me a month. I, most of the time I worked alone because if I needed somebody, I'd go get them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no. Mm -hmm. And I loved every minute of it. The only thing, oh yeah, then at the 30 years, Things were going to get slow for Keyhole. Mm -hmm. Unbeknown to me, he had throat cancer. So one day I'm coming home from New York, called him up. He says, "Stop over the office, Paul. I want to talk to you." I said, "Okay." And uh, he says, uh, "I think I'm going to pull the curtain." He said. Then he told me what was wrong. Mm -hmm. So he had four tugs left. He sold the barges, four tugs left. Uh, that son of a gun, he's like a guy that could sell uh, ice boxes to Eskimos, you know? Mm -hmm. He could sell anything. So, but I was working for Hess then, because right? when he was slowing down, I see the opportunity, so I went to work for Hess. Then in 1988, our union pulled a strike. So uh, it was quite a long strike too. So I wouldn't go across the picket line. So I said, hell, I'll take my pension, Social Security, call it quits. Mm -hmm. Then I get a call from the union, our union. It says, Paul, there's a union down south that take you on. Then I have a friend of mine call me and we work together. He said, Paul, I don't know, I don't care what you do, but don't take that job. 
He said, you've got to be a, a thriller to keep up with all that stuff. There's only one man on the boat now. you got all automatic controls, you know what I mean? Anything goes wrong, alarm goes off. You find out what it is and shut the alarm off, get ready for the next one. And so I, said, so I said, okay, I won't. Then my union called me again. He said, hey, Paul, you going to take that job? I said, no. I said, I'm all settled here with my pension and my Social Security. Mm -hmm. Now, did, did you stay in touch with anyone you were in the service with? Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, well, there's a guy in Albany. <laughs> there's a little story of that one. Yeah, he, uh, we were together. Every time we made a move, he had <coughs> his mother and father shipped him, shipped his car down to him from Rensselaer. Hmm. What a clunker. Well, anyway, uh, <laughs> we're in uh, Alabama, Mobile. Mobile, Alabama. We had a little trouble with our car. So we parked it and we're walking up the street. I heard his voice, get in, get in. He's still in the car, I don't know. So I opened the door, got in, and he took off. <laughs> I said, you know, Herbie, if we can make the tunnel, they had a short tunnel there. I said, we got this made. And then on our way over to Pensacola, we stopped at this gas station, and this guy pulls in. He wanted to know if we were trading. I, <coughs> I don't know. That's a, he was a. I got I got out of that mess because, uh, you know, if we got caught, I'd probably been. I don't know. Well, go ahead. What else? Did you uh, join any veterans organizations? Uh, American Legion. Um, the VFW? No, they, they tell me you you got to have foreign, foreign. Oh, okay. But I could have put that in too, cause <laughs> you called South America foreign. Mm -hmm. I had that a little bit. Yeah. But see, we used to go out and run. I say to the pilot, anybody going with you? No, get a shoe. I go get a shoe. And I get in the back seat with a gunner, and uh, we go out. We're on dive bombing runs now. Mm -hmm. Well, we get out in the Gulf of Mexico. It's pretty wide there, and we come down from five, six, seven thousand feet, and you're you're set like this in the cockpit, and now you're pulling out. You can't even lift your hands off your knees. The gravitation is so great. Uh -huh. And he drop a bomb or two, and the way we go. So I made a lot of them runs because uh -huh. I like I like flying, you know. We get uh, get up there and slow rolls, snap rolls. We had a what they call N two, that's a double wing job. Okay. Yep. You know, a trainer. Sure. And uh, the pilot said, "I need some weight, Gordon. You want to go? He wanted some weight in the back seat. So I go." That's the only thing, I got a little headache out of it. He started what they call the fallen leaf. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Back and forth. And I got a headache. That's the only time I got, you know. Okay. And I, we had a Piper Cup there as Lieutenant Marine Corps. He says, come on, go we take a ride. I said, okay, I got in. We're up about 1,200 feet. That's a control lower. Put your hand on the throttle, grab the stick. Just follow me through. Mm -hmm. We're making a stall. Mm -hmm. We're coming up. Just so the engine can't do no more. <laughs> you know? And he conked out. Give me the give me the control, he said. So I took my hands off the throttle and the stick and uh, put her in a dive and I'm watching a prop. Doom, doom. That didn't do it. You're he glided out and tried to dive again. Doom, doom. So, so we went down to another side field that they're all over the place, and we 
There's a barbed wire fence in this. He come up to it, jumped over the fence, which is what airspeed we had, and we landed. I jumped out, grabbed the prop, and started right up and got in and left. left. <laughs> and then uh, another Navy lieutenant, I think it was, we went into the, the N2, that, the double wing job, and um, they were trying to break me in, see? And um, we're up there flying, and he said, grab the stick, grab the stick. I grabbed it, he said, now let's go down. Oh, for some reason, I couldn't push on that stick. For some reason. I said, I can't do it. I, I was afraid I was going to give it too much, and we go, because we wasn't very far off the ground. <laughs> All right, okay, Gordon. <laughs> no, that was the end of that story. Mm -hmm. How do you think your time in the service changed or affected your life? Well, you, you see, I always liked people, and I always uh, obeyed people if they if they're, uh, unless they're, what do they call it, uh, hammering me or something. Mm -hmm. No, I, I like people, and, um, like, no, I like everybody but her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, uh, anyone else have any questions? <clears throat> Mr. Gordon, uh, with all those uh, cadets. Pardon? With all those cadets. It must have been accidents and in, uh, in their training. Oh them? yeah, we had one kid that. Uh, that's why they stopped us from flying with them. We're all in the mess hall this day, and the alarms go off, and fire trucks and everything. This young cadet, he got about 700 feet off the runway, <laughs> right straight down, killed him and the the serviceman. Another time, I never forget this. I get the rum rumbles afterwards. <clears throat> a guy I know, the pilot, he, um, he's in the plane on the run, uh, on the line, getting the plane ready, revved up, checking, checking the, uh, the plugs and everything, mm -hmm. one, two, you know, and uh, he says to the, the guy on the, on the wing, he says, where's the brakes? Well, their brakes are always in the same spot in a plane. Eh? Matter of fact, they, they tow them. Mm -hmm. When you want rudder, you use the heels. So he went out that day, and all at once we get alarm. We got a craft down. So I had time. I run like a son of a gun across the runway, which was uh, quite a distance. But being 18, 19 years old, he didn't, mm -hmm. he didn't feel it. So anyway, I got all the way over to where I thought he was, but he's on the other side of the swamp, and there's water in there. So I jumped right, wait a minute, Paul, there's crocodiles and snakes and everything else around there. You want to see somebody move? <laughs> I moved out. <laughs> then went around with the other guys, and it's, it's just going to be a little, uh, uh, well, I don't know what to call it. The pilot is sitting in the seat of the aircraft. The top of his head is laying right on the back of his shoulders. They pull the chute and throw it over the, over the chute or the, the pilot, you know. Then to find out afterwards, the only reason he was in the air cool like that, he, he wanted his mother and father that they wanted to be proud of him at being an officer, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But that, that guy should have never took off that day. Where's the brakes? And he wasn't kidding, you know. Hmm. Any other questions? Was, it, <clears throat> was the airfield you were at, was it mostly all training? Yeah, all training. All training. You yeah. didn't, did you uh, prepare? the planes for anywhere else for shipment or anything? No, only um, uh, we flew a few, well I used to come 
the one time I was on my, my first lead. And I come down, I wanted to ride down to Florida. And <clears throat> my brother was in an airfield down in Jersey. He says, stop here, maybe I can get you a ride. Well, the one wave says, I can get you in uh, uh, Texas, somewhere in Texas. I said, Jesus, that's going, I might as well walk because, <laughs> so I forgot that. Finally, um, I got, uh, yeah, I got in the plane. Uh, it was a TBM, and uh, with this pilot, and we flew it into Jackson, Mississippi. And then, in, in landing, I was in the upper turret, and I'm looking around as much as I can, and I, I was just about on the ground when I felt the plane jump like that. To find out, he told me that's what he said. That plane ahead of me just just stopped in front of me. He said I had to do something. To, that's what he did. So I got out of that one. So now I'm in Jackson, Mississippi. So I'm watching the schedule board or the board that they use. And you know, the train here, you're there. You want to go there? Tells you the miles. So. Uh, his pilot was over there, and he goes, Penta, Cola. Oh, hey, uh, sir, you need anybody for a wait or anything? Yeah, get a shoe, get a shoe. So I got to ride back to Pensacola. That was the main, main, then I had to get a bus out of there back to, that was the main field. Well, all kind of planes there, you know. Mm -hmm. And one, that was a uh, Tulane and Notre Dame football game. And was it Mississippi? Well, I forget now. Anyway, they wanted a squadron of us pull over. So that was uh, nine planes. And I happened to be in one of them, you know. <laughs> and uh, we're over there. We, we landed. The game starts, we take off. Now we're buzzing the stadium. Mm, now we go, Jesus, all we pull out. Because we got hell for it too. We pulled down too close. I could see the guys, the people are yawning. You know, <laughs> so that was, <laughs> we made another run, but nothing so steep, you know. I was scared for the people, because if that was a full stadium. You know, and uh, I don't know who won the game. Probably the other day. <laughs> all right. Anybody else? Just one more. Uh, did your brothers all come back in good shape? Pardon? Did your brothers all come back in fine shape? Uh, yes. Uh, that's the best part of the whole story. Is uh, my brother Clifford? He was in on the, on the African invasion. And he, he says, I can't understand it. It's, there are only Frenchmen over there, and they're all shooting at us. So anyway, he got ashore there, and then he went into uh, D-Day. He uh, got on what they call uh, the second wave going in. And uh, I don't think he ever got hurt. Uh, no. And my brother was on a DE, a uh, destroyer escort, a small boat, but... Uh, mm -hmm. They in sync too, you know. He was on that for a while, and my brother was on Guam and Okinawa. Then he went into Korea when the Korea War. Well, he was another. He, he loved the Marines. They got him signed up, you know, when he got out of the first bunch, and he was one of the first ones to go, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then. I never forget. It. He's in a a bar that burned down here, and he's in there, and he's telling the bartender behind the the counter about this Clayton La Rose. Unbeknown to him, his wife, Clayton's wife, was right, stand right there. 
they started talking about Clayton, and my brother Max says, you know where he got shot? He said, we went up through that valley the next day. And this woman used all kind of language on him. You know, that, that's a liar and all that shit, you know. And the kid went through all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was another good kid, Clayton. Never said a word. You know, he just done what he was supposed to. And, yeah. Were your brothers all older than you? Were you the youngest in the family? I'm the oldest guy in Whitehall, you know that? Well, I know that, but I mean, in your family. No, no. My brother Russell, he's 92. Will be. Yeah. My brother Bud, he's dead. My brother Clifford died. My brother Zun died. They were all in the, mm -hmm. the army. And they says, who we got? But my brother Marshall. My brother Gene. And myself. There were eight boys, one girl. Wow. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for your interview. Hmm? Thank you for your interview. That's it? That's it. Otherwise, I've got to use the phone. <laughs>